In this video, I'll compare Nano Server and Server Core. With Server 2008 and 2008 R2, Server Core was introduced. It was designed to be a bit of a smaller operating system than the full Windows Server with the graphical components. So because it didn't support the graphical environment, it was a little less resource intensive. When we did the installation of the Server 2008 or 2008 R2 operating system, we had the option to install Server Core or do a full GUI installation. But the problem was you were stuck with your installation choice. You couldn't change your mind after the fact. You couldn't add GUI components or remove them without performing a full reinstallation. With Server 2012 and 2012 R2, Server Core was the default installation option. But the great thing was that we could then add the GUI components as needed. We might do that, for example, if we wanted a Server Core installation but we had to install a driver or a piece of software that required the GUI. So we could add the GUI components, which required a reboot, and then we could install our software or drivers and then remove the GUI components. So the GUI components can be added and removed with Server 2012, including with R2. Nano Server, however, is not Server Core because it's completely headless, which means that there is no way to interact with the server operating system locally. There's not even a command prompt, and it's not even an option to add it, let alone adding the graphical interface components. Nano Server also has a fixed number of server roles. It can't run all the roles that a full server installation would support. Nano Server is really designed to run as a specialized application or Hyper-V server. It also has a limited CLR, that's the Common Language Runtime, as opposed to running a full version of the .NET framework. Let's take a look at Nano Server, as well as Windows Server Technical Preview 2 with and without the GUI components. What we're looking at is Windows Server Technical Preview 2 with the local admin tools installed. So we've got the full desktop interface available to us. I'm going to fire up the Hyper-V management tool where we can see we have a Nano virtual machine running. I'm going to double click on it to open up the console so we can interact with the Nano Server. But of course, we can't really interact with it because there is no local interface. It's a headless server operating system. So it's designed to be managed remotely over the network. Here we have a second virtual machine called Server 2. This is running the Windows Server Technical Preview 2 operating system. It's a default installation, so therefore there are no GUI components. Instead, it's command line only. We can see that it's asking us to press Control alt delete to unlock. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's sign in to see what it looks like once we've authenticated. So once we've authenticated, we can see essentially we have a command prompt. So this is very similar to what we saw in previous server operating systems as server core. Windows Nano Server is a cloud optimized platform that's designed to be used in large scale data centers. It uses what Microsoft calls a zero footprint model, whereby only the operating system components, including roles and features that we've chosen to install, are actually installed on the machine and are running. So as a result, it's got a very thin profile and therefore it can run more concurrent IT workloads than it otherwise would be able to. Nano Server is designed to run only a few roles, such as the file and storage services role, as well as the Hyper-V role, and things like the failover clustering feature. But more roles will potentially be added before the product is finalized and released. Some usage scenarios for Windows Nano Server include as an application container server that runs custom .NET applications. Application containerization allows isolation between different application containers running on the same host. This way, a single misbehaving or even compromised application in a container will negatively impact other application containers or the host operating system. The same type of thing is true when we talk about Hyper-V container isolation. We can also use the Nano Server for a scale-out file server. The Scaleout File Server or SOFS cluster role allows shared storage to be used by cluster nodes simultaneously. We also have the option of entering a Hyper-V host 
running on Nano in a number of ways. We could use PowerShell remoting, so we could enter a remote PowerShell session over the network to our Nano Hyper-V host using the Dash computer name parameter. We could also use PowerShell Direct if we are on the Hyper-V host to enter a PowerShell session with a virtual machine that might be having network connectivity problems. So take note that we don't use PowerShell Direct to connect to the Hyper-V host over the network. We use PowerShell Direct when we're already at the Hyper-V host to enter a session into a virtual machine. Of course, we can also use graphical tools like the Hyper-V Manager or System Center Virtual Machine Manager to remotely manage a Nano Hyper-V host. The clustering feature with Nano Server allows for quick cluster creation. This can be done using the failover cluster manager GUI remotely or by using the new dash cluster PowerShell commandlet. This will in turn enable a scale out file server role. This allows for file storage for applications and virtual machine files that are accessible by all cluster nodes simultaneously. Windows Nano Server runs Core CLR. CLR is Common Language Runtime. It also uses .NET Core, although these names may change before the product is finalized and released. So instead, we aren't running the full .NET framework. We're only running a subset of .NET. And that's one of the reasons why Windows Nano Server is so lightweight and small. There's no need to have all the APIs that would relate to the client stack things that deal with the desktop GUI, and so on. ASP.NET 5 will also be supported with Windows Nano Server. ASP.NET 5 is open source, and it's designed to run on many platforms, including Windows, Mac, and Linux. Its primary purpose is for developers that are building cloud applications. If we've got a server installation without the GUI tools, we still have more APIs available than just Nano Server. Nano Server is designed to be a lightweight specialized application or virtualization host. Whereas, if we install the Windows Server operating system without the GUI, it supports many more roles and features, and the GUI can be installed, just like it can be uninstalled. So there is no client stack with Windows Nano Server. Any app that's built that targets Nano Server will certainly run on server core or server with the GUI, but not necessarily vice versa. So as a developer, if we build an application that runs on the client stack with Windows Server, that will not run on Nano Server. The Windows Nano Server operating system also does not support WoW 64. That means there's no 32-bit support. It doesn't support MSI or Microsoft installers, and we don't have the full .NET framework that we might have become accustomed to in previous versions of the operating system. If we're using the Visual Studio tool, then we have templates available that allow us to target our development efforts towards Nano Server or the full server operating system. The great thing about Visual Studio also is that IntelliSense will help us and only give us help related to APIs that are available for Nano. That way we don't have to worry about coding APIs that don't exist on Nano Server. Any APIs that we might reference in our code that don't run on Nano Server will have red squiggles underneath them to underline them to identify those unsupported APIs. Visual Studio developers also enjoy the benefit of remote debugging against code on a Nano server. Developers can also build applications for Windows Server, which was formerly known as Server Core. Here we can add the GUI to the server operating system using, for example, the Add-Windows feature PowerShell commandlet. Adding the GUI means more APIs are exposed and can be programmatically accessed. The server operating system does support Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, but it is disabled by default. Both Nano Server and Windows Server, formerly known as Server Core, can run on physical hardware, within a virtual machine, or within a container. When running in a containerized environment, though, there is no client stack available, so we want to make sure that when we develop applications, we aren't referencing client stack APIs. The client stack was formerly known as server with a GUI. 
This allows us to have the full desktop experience on the server operating system, although Microsoft is recommending against this strategy. Instead, we really should be doing our management from a management workstation where we could use GUI tools against the server over the network. This is also called a full server installation. So we have the client components plus the graphical user interface. So we have our desktop shell, we have Internet Explorer, we have Windows Explorer, and of course we have support for remote desktop protocol. However, the GUI can be removed using the remove-windows feature PowerShell commandlet. So then we need to be careful when developing applications. We have to know whether it's going to be targeted against a nano server, the Windows Server operating system, formerly known as Server Core with no graphical environment, or if it'll be targeted to the full server or server with a GUI.